So hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, whichever is applicable. Um, and welcome to thematic room two. Uh, so my name is Brickna Kadesa. I'm a, a pediatrician uh, with focus on pediatric infectious diseases and HIV. Um, and my research and my research area generally focuses on pediatric um, pediatric HIV and infectious infections. I'm also a former Cypher grantee, and I will facilitate the presentations in uh, thematic room two uh, today, which is pediatric and adolescent treatment. Um, and before we proceed to the presentations, I'd like to uh, remind you some of the housekeeping rules. Um, so we'll have four presentations of eight minutes each um, in this thematic room. Um, and after all the presentations are done, we'll have 20, 25 minutes of question and answer um, session. Um, I would also like to remind you to send your questions, uh, if any, in the chat, uh, in the chat room function, or you could ask your questions verbally by using the chat, the raise hand function in Zoom. Um, and we'll, we'll, be, we'll make sure to um, give you the opportunity to speak if you see um, your hand within the chat within the, within the Zoom uh, raise hand function. Um, and when you ask questions, if, you, if your question is directed to a, spe a specific speaker in our room, in our thematic room, please note that as well because it will help us to um, uh, direct or to, to target to direct the questions to the to the speakers. We would also kindly ask you to be brief while asking questions so that we have enough time uh, by the end of the presentation to address all the questions. And um, uh, as of now, all of us, all of you are, are muted. Um, if, um, if there is a need for unmuting, uh, that will be during the Q&A part, uh, we'll take you through that uh, later on. And please also uh, turn off your, cam your camera. Now I think for most of us, turn it off. So uh, that will help us to also have a good bandwidth and a, a smoother um, a Zoom conference. And I would also like to remind you that this will be this webinar will be recorded and uh, we'll also save the chat. Um, so when you ask questions, it would be great if you could indicate your name and contact details. Um, and uh, since we'll uh, share the chat with the speakers at the end of the, the webinar, and they will be uh, able to follow up with you in case uh, anything is not addressed during this meeting. Um, so four great presentations uh, from four Cypher grants today. Um, we have um, Kerry Evans from uh, based in Zimbabwe, Adesir uh, uh, based in uh, Burkina Faso, Jenna and Dutrit, uh, based in South, Afri South Africa, and uh, Tekdin uh, Jasper, based in Nigeria. Um, well, with this, I will go directly to, the, uh, to our presentations, and our first presenter um, will be Kerry Evans. And uh, Kerry, over to you. Please proceed. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, please let me know if you can't. Um, so I'm going to talk about my Great. Uh, so I'm going to talk about my project. Uh, you can see the title here. Uh, we're looking at the impact of improved wash or water sanitation and hygiene on uh, CMV co-infection in mothers and children uh, affected by HIV in rural Zimbabwe. Uh, next slide, please. So just uh, as a bit of background, um, I'm sure I'm, I'm speaking to people who know this already, but just as a background, uh, children who are born to mothers with HIV, uh, even if they remain HIV uninfected themselves, uh, still don't survive and thrive as well as children born to mothers without HIV. And within our cohort uh, of mothers and children uh, from rural Zimbabwe that we've published so far, I just draw your attention to these two charts. So on the left hand side, we're looking at mortality. Uh, the red line is showing children who are HIV exposed and the blue line is children who are uh, HIV unexposed. And what we can see here is that the children who are HIV exposed have a higher mortality uh, in the first 18 months of life. Uh, and this mortality happens uh, very, very early in life. We can see this steep incline uh, and big gap between the red and blue lines early on in life that remains uh, throughout the whole 18 month follow up period. 
Among children who, who did survive and were confirmed to be uh, HIV negative at 18 months of age, the right hand side uh, of this slide shows the length for age Z score. So this is looking at a child's uh, length or height uh, in, in respect of their age. And again, we can see the blue line, uh, which is the children born to mothers without HIV, and the red line is the children born to mothers with HIV. And what this is showing is, again, from very early in life, a, uh, a, a lower length for age Z score among children who are HIV exposed, um, suggesting that they are not thriving as well as children who are HIV unexposed. Next slide, please. So the reasons for these poor outcomes in uh, children who are HIV exposed but uninfected are still very unclear. This may be a reflection of socioeconomic differences, whereby children and families uh, who are affected by HIV may uh, 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 be in lower socioeconomic groups. This may be a problem of, of immunology, where a child has their fetal development in the womb uh, affected by HIV, and this could affect uh, the, uh, the developing immune system. Well, this could be a problem of co-infections, and this is what we're looking at here in this project. So next slide, please. So CMV, or cytomegalovirus, is a very important uh, co-infection uh, in the context of HIV. Uh, we know that CMV co-infection is associated with uh, poorer clinical outcomes amongst children who are living with HIV and also adults with HIV. And we are, uh, are hypothesizing the role of CMV in driving these poor clinical outcomes uh, in children who are HIV exposed but uninfected. Next slide, please. So the purpose of this grant, uh, there, are, uh, there are a few aims which I'll talk through, but overall is to explore the relationship between uh, maternal and early life uh, cytomegalovirus and the survival, growth and neurodevelopment of children in our rural Zimbabwean birth cohort. Uh, this study is embedded within a randomized controlled trial, uh, allowing us to test the impact of a household level uh, WASH intervention on reducing CMV transmission from mother to child. Um, like I say, this is within a, a trial called the SHINE trial, which is a two by two factorial cluster randomized trial, uh, which was assessing the individual and combined effects of uh, improved nutrition and improved wash on growth and early child development. The water sanitation hygiene intervention was quite extensive. Uh, we built uh, ventilated improved pit latrines. Uh, we provided chlorine uh, to help with safe drinking water. Uh, we provided uh, hand washing stations with soap and water to allow uh, mothers and children and, and the whole family actually to wash their hands. Um, and we also provided uh, a clean uh, play space, allowing children to uh, be separated from livestock, particularly uh, chickens. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is uh, a bit of a busy slide, but I just wanted to talk through uh, what our hypothesis is. So our hypothesis is that a uh, mother living with HIV at the very top uh, might have more uh, CMV, uh, CMV viremia during, uh, during the period of uh, pregnancy. This might have a few effects. It could increase uh, infant CMV acquisition, which we know generally happens very early in life in this part of the world, but may happen even earlier uh, if the mother has um, either a higher CMV viremia level or more CMV at all. Um, this could also affect the, the mother's immune system or the infant's immune system. And all of these things combined could, have, could be one of the reasons for the excess mortality, uh, growth and new develop, new developmental impairment that we are seeing. And we think that our water sanitation and hygiene intervention uh, could affect uh, these two stages here, either uh, preventing uh, mothers living with HIV from becoming CMV viremic, or um, by reducing the transmission of CMV from mother to child. Next slide, please. So the specific aims and objectives of this project are firstly to explore the epidemiology of CMV amongst mothers and infants. Um, this will be done by uh, undertaking uh, CMV uh, PCRs, or polymerase chain reaction experiments, on uh, mothers uh, at two time points during pregnancy, uh, at around 12 to 14 gestational weeks, and again at around 32 gestational weeks. And then we'll look at uh, infant saliva in the first 18 months of life to try to understand at what time point these children uh, acquire CMV. 
Moving on to aim two, we'll then explore the associations between CMV in both mothers and children and the clinical outcomes of children exposed to HIV. And then thirdly, we'll evaluate the impact of our WASH intervention uh, on reducing CMV uh, viremia in mothers and children. Next slide, please. Uh, we think this will be a really impactful project because uh, in some parts of Southern Africa, uh, children exposed to HIV now uh, make up 40% um, or sometimes even higher of all children in these settings. And like I, I highlighted at the beginning of this presentation, uh, children uh, who are HIV exposed have poorer clinical outcomes, including increased mortality and growth in neurodevelopmental failure. We're looking specifically at stunting, stunting meaning uh, a small height or small length for age. And we know that stunting itself is associated with mortality, uh, poorer school performance, uh, poorer school attendance, and even reduced economic productivity in adulthood. And there's also this intergenerational cycle whereby children who are stunted um, go on to become parents of children who are also stunted, um, in, in increasing the cycle of poor clinical outcomes and, of course, poverty. Next slide, please. Um, we think that we need interventions pretty urgently to try to close this gap in clinical outcomes between children who are HIV exposed and unexposed. And we think that this uh, project will be good for identifying a target for interventions if we find that CMV is an important co-infection and also uh, allow us to generate evidence as to whether what one of the, the important drivers of poor outcomes, if it is CMV, can be effectively prevented through household level public health intervention. And I will uh, stop there. I think that's my last slide. Just to say uh, thanks to all of our collaborators. We've also had funding from, from these other organizations, of course, for the, for the trial itself. Um, and I'm looking forward to discussing this with you later and taking all of your questions. Thank you. Um, so with that, we go to the, our second speaker. Our second speaker is the uh, uh, Dehuru based in Burkina Faso. So um, over to you, Desir. Okay, thank you. And, sorry, okay, please proceed. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Desire Dauru. I am epidemiologist and researcher at Institute de Recherche en Sciences de la Santé in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. It's my pleasure today to talk about my Cypher Grant project titled Evaluation of Mental Health Resistance Mutation and Practice of New Therapeutic Regimen and Production and Their Tolerance in Adolescents Living with HIV in West Africa. Next slide, please. As a background, you can say that the scale up of antiretroviral therapy program uh, <clears throat> permit the growing number of children living with perinatal HIV reaching adolescents in West Africa. This population is facing high mortality rate. Indeed, now HIV is the second leading cause of, mort of death among adolescents. This higher mortality is related to poor adherence which may be related to mental health disorder exacerbated by the HIV status disclosure, late and under poor condition. However, limited evidence exists on the burden of mental health disorder among adolescents living with HIV in West Africa and its relation with disclosing the HIV status. Also, first Few studies document the viral suppression and drug resistant mutation in adolescents living with HIV in West Africa. Next slide, please. So, in this context, we developed the optimized project, which aim is to document the adolescent health outcome according to a package of intervention promoting timely HIV disclosure before 12 years, and peer intervention to improve IRT adherence. This project will be conducted between 2020 and 2022. We propose in this Cypher grant project to document the burden of the mental health disorder and resistance mutation of these adolescents to improve their treatment outcome. 
Next slide, please. We have four specific aims. The first is to estimate the prevalence of mental health disorder, depression and anxiety among adolescents living with HIV and identify its associated factors. The second is to study the impact of disclosing HIV status and of mental health disorder on biological response. The third is to measure the prevalence of resistant mutation among adolescents living with HIV experiencing biological failure and study its determinants. And the last is to document the introduction of new IRT drug and their impact on HIV treatment outcome, including adverse events and viral circulation. Next slide, please. So to achieve this objective, we will conduct a multi-country core study, which will include six sites in four countries in West Africa. Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Mali, and Togo. All consenting adolescents aged 10 to 17 years will be included in this study. At baseline, we will collect demographic, clinical data, and blood samples for virological testing and to constitute a biobank. For mental health data, we will use patient health questionnaire 9 item two for depression and generalized anxiety disorder seven item scale for anxiety. Included adolescent will be followed for 24 months. Clinical data will be collected quarterly, mental health yearly. Biological tests will be done for biological suppressed adolescent yearly and quarterly for those in biological failure. Next slide, please. We expected to include uh, up to 1,000 adolescents. For data analysis, we will use descriptive statistics to describe our outcome and also uh, regression model to, uh, to identify factors associated with mental health disorder and biological response. Next slide, please. The expected outcome of this cipher grant will generate evidence on disclosure of HIV status the burden of mental health disorder and their impact on biological outcome and resistant mutation among adolescents living with HIV in West Africa. We will also generate evidence to advocate with stakeholders and funders to integrate mental health services into adolescents living with HIV care in order to promote positive mental health and to prevent mental health condition in this population. In addition, this study result will be useful to design, implement, and evaluate potential intervention to improve HIV infected adolescent health. Next slide, please. So, so and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, our third speaker will be Janan Dutrik, uh, based in South Africa. Uh, Janan, over to you. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Janan Dietrich, um, and I'm a research psychologist based at the Perinatal HIV Research Unit in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I also have an affiliation with the University of, of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. However, my cyber project is being conducted with the Health Systems Research Unit of the South African Medical Research Council in, in South Africa. My presentation today is going to focus on the role of psychosocial resources with HIV knowledge and antiretroviral therapy exposure 
in adolescent girls and young women living in living with HIV in, in South Africa. Um, and then I am privileged to be a Cypher uh, 2019 fellow. Next slide. So just to give a very brief context, uh, adolescent girls and young women aged 15 to um, 24 years and living with HIV have poor outcomes for ART, poor outcomes for antiretroviral therapy, and less than half of adolescents living with HIV know their status or adhere to treatment. Next slide. Um, and then just to add that um, few studies, as the previous speaker has said, uh, few studies have focused on the role of um, psychosocial factors that affect adolescent girls and young women living with HIV, um, and this includes mental health, and even few have focused on the role of, of resilience. So my cipher project is located within a larger project that's, that's being conducted by the South African Medical Research Council, and it's called the Her, Sto Her Story Study. So for Her Story, we are conducting two waves of data collection, and I'm reporting on the, the first wave, which was the baseline data collection. And the aim of Her Story was to evaluate a large uh, scale combination HIV prevention intervention that was aimed at adolescent girls and young women aged 10 to 24 years in, in South Africa. And this intervention was implemented in 10 uh, districts across the country. Um, and of course, the intervention is aimed at achieving the UNAIDS 1990-90 targets. Um, and then to end HIV by 2030. Next slide. So just, I just wanted to show you the map of, of South Africa and, and all the orange parts are, are where the interventions were delivered. Um, and then for the larger study, the planned sample size was 7,300 participants, but in the end, we surveyed 4,399 participants. Participants completed an interviewer administered questionnaire using a, a computer tablet, and some blood samples were collected for HIV testing and to test for um, initiation of art and viral suppression. And then for the survey, participants completed quite a long and in-depth um, set of valid set of measures, including uh, validated measures. Next slide. Um, and next slide, please. Okay, so the aim of um, my, my cyber project was to investigate the influence of, as I mentioned before, psychosocial resources on knowledge of HIV positive status and art exposure among um, participants who were HIV positive and aged 15 to 24 years. Um, we assessed five well-known um, and widely used validated scales we assessed um, well-being, resilience, social support, gender equity, and AIDS-related stigma. And we then conducted bivariate and multivariable analysis using R. Next slide. So just to give you um, some demographic information of the participants who, who tested positive. So, of the four of the of the larger sample, which is four thousand three hundred and ninety nine, five hundred and sixty eight um, tested positive, and among the HIV positive sample, 
69% were aged 22, 24 years. Most of the sample, so 89% had secondary schooling, and then also most are reported ever having had sex. 67% um, had ever been pregnant, and 62% had knowledge of the HIV status. Next slide. Okay, I've mentioned this already. But just to reiterate that eligible participants were 15 to 24 years and residents of the, the areas where the intervention um, was taking place. And of course, for, for the analysis, we, we restricted it to the HIV positive participants. And then for the larger sample, HIV prevalence was 12%. Next slide. Okay, so. What did we find? So firstly, amongst the 568 participants who were positive, 356 had knowledge of the HIV status, and then 83% had AOT metabolites detected in their blood. So they were, ex they were on art. So for the multivariable analysis, if we look at the column under knowledge of HIV status, we found that social, um, social support from family and then support from a special uh, person was associated with having knowledge of the HIV status. And then for, um, for, for being on art, only resilience was um, resilience was the only psychosocial construct that was significantly associated with art exposure. And then, yeah, the results indicate that for each unit increase in resilience, there was a 5% increase in the odds of, of being on art. Next slide. Okay, um, we also assessed facilitators and barriers to clinic access, and so facilitators were 37% um, reported that living close to a clinic was a facilitator and having transport was a facilitator, while barriers were long waiting queues, long travel distance, and other transport issues that uh, they reported. Next slide. Okay, so the implications are that interventions maximizing social support and resilience may increase knowledge of HIV status and art use among adolescent girls and young women living with HIV in South Africa. In South Africa. Further research is of course necessary to further understand the mechanisms that increase resilience in um, these young women living with HIV um, the results also suggest the importance of caregiver child interventions as adolescent girls are still likely to, to rely on their caregivers for support. And an initial solution may be to integrate tailored psychosocial counselling into existing HIV care services for adolescent girls and young women living for HIV. And that's, that's the end of yeah, that's the end. And I would just like to acknowledge all of the people who work with me um, and have supported me, and especially my mentors, Catherine Matthews at the MRC and, and Glenda Gray. And next slide. Yeah, also, there are so many collaborators that um, funded the intervention program for the adolescent girls and, and young women in South Africa and also multiple funders for the evaluation. So I just wanted to acknowledge all of them. And my last slide. Thank you. Okay, please feel free to um, send your questions or to reach out to, um, to me after the talk. Thank you. Great, thank you. Yeah, please, um, uh, I just want to remind you to also write any questions in the chat room if you have any. 
Um, so, and we go to our last speaker, uh, to Tim Jasper from Nigeria. Um, over to you. All right. Uh, good day, all. I'm Tongian Jasper from the, I work with the Institute of Human Virology, Nigeria, as a senior program officer for continuous quality improvement, particularly for children and adolescents. Um, the title of my um, CIFAR project is the impact of structured caregiver peer support on antiretroviral therapy adherence and viral suppression among children living with HIV in Nigeria. Next slide, please. So the CAP study team comprises of um, seven investigators, um, including myself and the study mentor in the person of Dr. Nadia Sam Agudu and five other collaborators. And here is a list of um, the collaborating institutions. Next slide, please. Um, so by way of uh, introduction, children living with HIV are less likely to achieve viral suppression and they usually have higher morbidity and mortality rate compared to the adult um, people living with HIV. And one of the major issue is the by proxy nature of pediatric antiretroviral therapy adherence, where uh, children depend on caregivers for adherent drug administration. Another issue is the unfriendly and confusing nature of drug formulations and dosing for pediatrics. And this dosing keeps changing as the weight of the child changes. Then this is uh, another major barrier is uh, poor knowledge of caregivers um, about the care and treatment for their children, especially with respect to the medications, the dosing and the formulations. And um, in Nigeria, several studies have been conducted, including studies conducted by our study team in Nigeria that showed that peer support improves adherence, um, antiretroviral therapy adherence and viral suppression among pregnant women and adolescents. So the CAP study is looking at uh, peer support for caregivers as a feasible and impactful approach to improve ART adherence and viral suppression among children. Next slide, please. Okay, so the CAP study has uh, four aims. Uh, the first is to evaluate the effectiveness of structured peer support to caregivers in achieving viral suppression among children living with HIV. And the second is to evaluate the effectiveness of structured caregiver peer support in improving drug pickup rates for children living with HIV. Um, we would also, uh, the third is to establish the baseline cohort prevalence of antiretroviral drug resistance among children living with HIV. And then the fourth aim will explore the facilitators and barriers to pediatric ART administration and adherence from the perspective of different stakeholders, which include children living with HIV caregivers, healthcare workers, community members and leaders, and policy makers. Next slide, please. So to achieve this aim, um, we have identified six facilities from 15 secondary healthcare facilities that provide comprehensive pediatric ART care and treatment services in the two study states within North Central Nigeria. Um, sites, these six sites are sites with high volume of people living with HIV, greater than 500, and with greater than or equals to 35 um, unsuppressed children in care and have at least one adherence counselor at the facility. These six uh, facilities will be further randomized into two clusters, um, the intervention arm and the control arm with three facilities in each of these clusters. The intervention arm will receive structured caregiver peer support from champion caregivers, while the control arm will continue to receive standard of care with no structured caregiver peer support. And uh, we'll be recruiting 66 unsuppressed children and their caregivers in each of the study arms. And outcomes of viral suppression rates and antiretroviral therapy drug refill rates would be measured at six months, 12 months, and 18 months during the study. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, the intervention arm would consist of three facilities, as earlier mentioned, 
at each of these facilities, we'll recruit two champion caregivers. The champion caregivers uh, recruited will be trained, would have comprehensive training up on pediatric care and treatment to, inc to include pediatric HIV treatment gaps and ARV formulations, dosing, adherence counseling, biologic failure and suppression, and, and a lot more. And then um, following the training, these champion caregivers who are the caregiver mentors would have one-on-one um, -on -one and group interactions with their peer mentees. The group interactions will hold monthly to quarterly, depending on the clinic schedule for the peer mentees, and it will last about 30 minutes to an hour, while the one-on-one -on -one peer support will be provided during home visits quarterly or during uh, two phone calls, periodic phone calls. Each champion caregiver will be assigned about 10 to 15 clients, peer uh, caregivers to, to mentor. And during these interactions, they would be discussing around medication adherence, age-appropriate disclosure, adherence to clinic appointment, and other challenges based on the individualized needs of the child living with HIV and the caregiver. Next slide, please. So uh, to be included into the study are children living with HIV with, between the ages of six months and 10 years, and they should be on treatment for greater than six months. And these are children who have an unsuppressed viral load within the last six months. And uh, the unsuppressed viral load of greater than an, or equal to 1,000 copies per meal per our national guideline in Nigeria. The caregivers should be adults um, for 18 years to 65 years, regardless of the agenda, start the HIV status or education. And they should be caring for the child as their primary caregiver. Next slide, please. So um, we expect um, outcomes from CAP study to improve knowledge and skills of caregivers in HIV care and treatment to enhance medication adherence for their children. We also expect uh, outcomes to help close the viral suppression gap that currently exists among children living with HIV. And we also expect that outcomes will support the evidence base for formal integration of structured caregiver peer support into HIV programs and policy. Next slide, please. So here is a snapshot of um, the study progress thus far. We have conducted site assessments, identified um, sites for inclusion. We have designed the champion caregiver training curriculum and other study tools. And uh, we have thus far commenced the formative qualitative study. We have conducted focus group discussions and key informant interviews and are currently analyzing um, and the results from the interviews. The outcomes will be used to modify the training curriculum and also modify the intervention to suit our study context. Um, from the key, as we can see, um, some of the activities that were planned were delayed as captured in uh, the red, as reflected in yellow and red. So we, we had some delay due to COVID-19 pandemic and the challenges associated. And uh, we uh, have tried our best to mitigate some of these challenges by conducting some of the study activities, including the interviews through virtual platforms. And that has been helpful. Next slide, please. So I would like to say a big thank you to IAS Cypher for the funding and learning opportunity to my institution for institutional support, to the research team and collaborators for the support and mentoring. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so with this, we finalize, we, we uh, have finished our presentation, our four presentations. I would like to thank the presenters for um, the nice presentation and uh, for, uh, Time, uh, really, really exciting project. Uh, I also would like to remind our participants uh, to send any questions in the chat box or uh, please raise your hand in the raise hand function in Zoom um, if any questions. And then uh, I will, we will call upon, uh, call upon you if you want. Um, please also write your questions in the chat box uh, if you have any. And then 
um, when you do so, it would be great if you can specify, if you can include your contact details and also if it's direct to a specific speaker, please do so in the, in the chat box or when you uh, present to them. Um, so with that, um, our Q&A discussion is now open. Please. Uh, Yeah, any questions now? Uh, welcome. Can you hear me now? Sorry, I, I think my video was not. Right. Any questions? Um, please write in the chat box or please raise your hand and then uh, we will ask you to unmute and speak. Yeah. Uh, We have one question from uh, I, uh, so it's on the it says on the CMV cohort understanding stunting stunting might, might be multifactorial. How does the team uh, plan to address this? I think this is a question for Eva for um, Evans for Kerry. Kerry can go ahead and address it. Sorry. Great. Yeah. Thanks very much. That's that's a really good question. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, the reasons for stunting are almost certainly going to be multifactorial. Um, we, our hypothesis is that CMV may be one of the probably many, many drivers of stunting in this, in this cohort. Um, it, we have a whole range of um, baseline characteristics of all of the mothers and children uh, in, our, in our study. Um, we'll also be looking, for example, at uh, HIV viral loads in the mothers, um, CD4 count, the socioeconomic uh, backgrounds uh, using a, a new wealth index that we've designed for use in rural Zimbabwe. Um, and we will be using um, uh, um, uh, adjusted analyses and our statistical approaches uh, to try to determine uh, you know, the, the relative impacts of all of these uh, different factors in driving stunting. Um, Interestingly, in a, a pre-antiretroviral therapy era study in Kenya, uh, they found that the presence of um, maternal CMV viremia was predictive of mortality in children, um, which, and it was more predictive than uh, maternal HV viral load and CD4 count. So we do think that CMV might be one of the, uh, the biggest uh, roles of all, but this is yet to be explored. Um, and yeah, I agree with your question. Uh, there's probably going to be lots of uh, reasons for stunting, but we will use assistive approaches to try to work this out. Thank you. Very good. Um, we also have, okay, and uh, we also have, um, um, I think it's also uh, possible that our grants have some questions. For example, I know uh, there's one from the CRD. Do you want to ask your question? Okay, I, I can probably ask. I can probably read the question from here. If you have any thoughts, it would it's, uh, would be uh, nice to reflect. Um, and all of you in the audience are, are welcome to reflect to the question. So here, here, here is how the question reads from from this year. Um, in, West, in the West African context of low HIV prevalence uh, uh, with high stigma, the HIV stats disclosure to HIV infected adolescents and, adolescents and mental health issues are likely to be more important. Uh, the training of healthcare workers on mental health issues and psychosocial support would improve the care of these adolescents in this region uh, where there is shortage of psychologists and mental health, um, uh, mental health specialists. Uh, so, does uh, IGPAF uh, have training resources in mental health for healthcare workers? Is the first question, and the second one um, that uh, this year wants to discuss is: Does uh, IGPAF uh, support psychosocial intervention in West African countries? Um, yeah, if, if you have. Uh, any reflections on that, that would be great. Uh, you can also uh, further reach out to this air on his uh, contact details, obviously, but uh, would be appreciated if you have any um, uh, reflections on that also.
Okay. I don't see any hands or questions. Um, yeah. So, this here, can you help? Can you hear me? Do you want to probably um, expand on your question a little bit, or did, did I get it right? Yes, I can hear you. My question is uh, for I don't know if we have uh, extra staff uh, in this webinar in this subgroup. My question is uh, address it to ECPAF. All right. Um, I, I'm with EGPAP when you start and I'm, I'm hosting the webinar. Um, and I know that we do have training resources, we do support psychosocial interventions, but I'm not programmatic staff. So if there are EGPAP programmatic staff on this call and you um, have some thoughts on this, please share. If not, I'm happy to forward this question on to some other EGPAP staff for you, Desiree. That would be great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure. Very nice. Um, yeah, so to say, we also have another question for you here from uh, from Laura. What are the common uh, mental health issues among um, adolescents living with HIV in your study population and what steps or actions uh, have your study uh, taken to improve mental health of adolescents living with HIV among your study population? So please go ahead and yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the study we 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 have not done the study yet. So in West Africa, as I say, little is known about the common mental health problem about uh, among adolescents living with HIV. But in other settings, uh, we can it's uh, it's mainly depression and anxiety in other settings like uh, South Africa and Europe and United States. Some adolescents also have some self-harm and suicidality issues. So to address this problem and this mental health disorder in West Africa, for our study, we have psychologists and, and we plan also to use peer, peer adolescents to support the adolescents with mental health disorder. Thank you. Uh, it looks like we have another question from, uh, from Kerry to Janan. Um, was all your data collection pre-COVID? Uh, do you know how much uh, COVID impacted ILTUs among adolescents? Is it likely to be a bigger impact than among adults or would, uh, would they be less, uh, less affected? Uh, Janan, if you uh, please respond to that. Sure, sure. Thanks for the question. So, this um, her story studies it's taking place in two. There will be two data time points, and I use data from the baseline survey, and that was conducted pre-COVID. Um, but the second data collection point is actually starting in. In this month actually um, and we know that young people actually have been affected so much in terms of you know accessing clinics accessing um, you know just having food security um, and we do expect that they that the young people who participated in the larger intervention that they would have been impacted by COVID and as part of the the survey and data collection for this second data collection point, we have included quite a few questions to try and understand how, how COVID has impacted these, these, young, these young women. Um, we are also fortunate because the data collection will be qualitative and quantitative, so we'll also be able to understand the nuance of, of how COVID has really impacted young, young women. I hope that answers 
Yeah. And any other questions, uh, please feel free to ask, raise your hand or uh, write in the chat box. Um, Yeah, and we have uh, also another question from Marisa. Uh, if uh, following up on Sarah's question, beyond if, if, if egg puff colleagues, I'm sorry for that. If any of the participants uh, on the call have any training resource in mental health or uh, healthcare workers, this that would be. Resources or who know of any resources that they can refer to for mental mental health training. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any other questions. Maybe one for uh, uh, from myself or uh, and the end. You you plan to investigate drug resistance in um, to establish a baseline cohort prevalence of nucleoside reverse transcripted uh, in NRTI and in NRTI and also PI uh, drug resistance among um, who are who are on HIV. How much a problem is it in the in the other population in Nigeria uh, regarding uh, HIV drug resistance, uh, specifically for required and um, um, pre treatment HIV drug resistance? Um, okay, thanks. Thank you for the question. Even though you were breaking at some point, but I know you're right. asking um, you are asking how much of a program uh, problem drug resistance is in Nigeria. Yes. Yes, sorry for my or other groups. So um, drug resistance uh, is a major issue in Nigeria uh, for all uh, population groups of people living with HIV in Nigeria, but it's worse among children. And unfortunately, um, the PEPFAP program in Nigeria does not support uh, drug resistant testing. So very few people are able to afford that. So what we do in Nigeria is that um, and drug resistance uh, testing is based on the discretion of um, healthcare workers, the clinicians who would decide after um, repeated, you know, after comprehensive adherence counseling and then establishment of adherence. And despite that, clients still remain unsuppressed. And so the they rule out a, a drug resistance and commence them on another therapy. So this is a big opportunity for us to have a good idea of and the drug resistance amongst children for the different groups of antiretroviral drugs they are on. So, so it's a major issue which is reflected by the high um, on suppression rate among children. Okay. And uh do you have, have uh, HIV drug resistance testing facilities accessible to most, uh, for example, let's say district HIV centers? Um, not readily accessible, but uh, for the study states, we have uh, access in, the, in the, the capital city, which is uh, Abuja FCT, which is one of the study site states. And then other study state is very close to Abuja. So we intend to leverage on the available resources. So there are really um, very few, but for the study, we, we are lucky that we have in the, within the study states. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, and, and then maybe the other question I have, which is a more general one uh, for all of you is, uh, how actually how COVID actually impacted your uh, projects uh, generally? If uh, um, did, did it interrupt or did it like disrupt the um, project activities or how, yeah? And if we could respond to that maybe briefly, if you have any. Yeah, I can <clears throat> I can go first. Um, so all of our participants were were recruited um, long before. 
COVID, so that hasn't been an issue and all of our samples are stored. Uh, we did have uh, COVID-related delays uh, because we had um, a lockdown in Zimbabwe, of course, and our, our lab has been closed, so that has delayed us. Uh, we're now trying to catch up on work. One of the issues we've had has been getting reagents for, um, so CMV is a DNA virus, um, and getting reagents to, uh, to quantify DNA viruses by PCR has been difficult because the companies have only been selling RNA PCR kits uh, because COVID is an RNA virus. Uh, so that's, that's been one of the problems we faced, of course, um, just adding to the, the impact of COVID on, on all of our work. Um, but yeah, we're getting, we're getting back into it and hopefully our delays won't be, won't be too vast. Thank you. Okay, so uh, from Tong Dien, I think I mentioned some of the challenges we uh, experienced due to COVID. And uh, for us, it's, it's really impacted on an, our study implementation because um, at the time when we were supposed to commence the qualitative interviews, uh, we had COVID delays because um, of the restrictions, movement restrictions, the social distancing and all. And here in our setting, most of our participants do not have access to and good internet connectivity for virtual interviews. So that really delayed um, some aspect of our study. Thank you. It's, it's Desiree. Thank you. Uh, it's the main, it's the same situation uh, for me because uh, we, we delayed the study recruitment because of uh, COVID pandemic. And now we, we are starting also to include uh, participants in the in two sites in Ivory Coast. And I think we will start the inclusion process this month or later in January. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I, I don't see any uh, hands or any questions in the chat box anymore. Uh, we're almost about uh, time also. Um, we have about five minutes. Oh yeah, okay, we have one. Uh, I, have Jenna, a, go ahead. Yes. I have a question and it's, it's open to everyone. Um, so my work, I, I am a research psychologist. <laughs> And within South Africa, they are very, they are very limited um, mental health resources available. And even where they are available, they are long waiting lists. Um, and at the moment, mental health support is not routinely, you know, it's not part of routine care. Um, and my question to, to others on the call is how do we advocate for incorporating mental health support into, into routine care? Yeah, that's my question. Thank you, Jenna. Any, any um, suggestions to Jenna would be welcome. Uh, in the chat box or you could raise your hands. Uh, can I can I just talk about something that we've been doing in Zimbabwe? It's a little bit unrelated to my particular project, but it's something I've been peripherally involved in. Um, I can put a link in the chat um, about what we call the Friendship Bench, um, which was designed by Dixon Trabanda here in in Harare, and this is where uh, we have been, or they have been, training um, lay uh, members of society, generally older women, um, to. Uh, uh, initiate talking therapy uh, with um, uh, adults um, mostly, but can be used for adolescents and even children as well, uh, where they are addressing uh, mental health problems and uh, improving problem solving activities to try to improve um, mental health generally in communities. Uh, and they have experience in using this tool to improve um, ART adherence. And there's a, a large trial which is still ongoing. I'm not sure how much it's been impacted by COVID, uh, but should still be ongoing to 
to really um, trial this tool. So it involves, it's called the Friendship Bench, and it actually involves um, sitting outside on a bench and discussing and talking through problems um, to try to um, address common mental health problems like anxiety and depression. Um, and yeah, I'll, set, I'll put a link in the chat box because maybe you'll find that helpful. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard about the Friendship Bench. Very interesting <laughs> and practical solution, actually. Thanks. Right. Uh, doesn't look that we have any more questions now. Uh, Marisa. Yeah, sorry, Vicky. Say... I just wanted to follow up with this uh, this question, and that is: is anybody else on the call thinking about that about integrating uh, mental health uh, more into the, the 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 care and how that can be done? Because this is something that's come up in in several of our of our discussions, and there's broad recognition of the importance of mental health support. So um, I was just wondering if others are are thinking about this. Yeah. All right. Also, also looks that we have now. Um, we. So we'll have our. She's not okay. So we'll have the. Um, uh, the PSS specialist on the call to answer the same question, so we can uh, probably wait for a bit. Yeah. This is related to the mental health uh, resources in West Africa. Yes, if we have the time, we're trying to get our um, AGPAF staff, who really specializes on our PSS, onto this call to answer that question. If she doesn't um, make it in time, we'll be sure to send an email out. Okay. All right. Okay, so I think we will probably um, close here. Thank you very much for uh, the um, nice presentations and also for the active participation. Um, it was a great discussion. Um, I would like to really thank you all for uh, the participation. Um, that's, we're now coming to the close um, uh, Um, yeah. Thank you. That's this is the end, right? Thanks. Thank you to everyone for joining. Yes, thank you, everyone. And if you, if you still have questions, as you can see, you know, they can be uh, answered. You can send them by email to cipher at asociety.org. Uh, uh, as, as thank you very much. Thank you, Bekne. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bekne. Thank you all. Bye.